To disassemble the flywheel, you will have to loosen the gland nut, we will discuss that in video 12. But first you will need to disassemble the clutch. You can do that when the engine is on the workbench, or hanging from an engine mount. We are using our AB1300 engine for this video, it still has its original clutch dating back to the early 1970s. To avoid spinning the flywheel during this work, you can use a flywheel lock tool. This tool was already used in video 10 when disassembling the crankshaft pulley. Tighten the nut on this special tool. There is a possibility that the crankshaft, flywheel, clutch was balanced. If you plan to use the clutch again, we recommend reinstalling the clutch pressure plate in the same way, just to be sure. While the chances are slim for this engine, for completeness, we show how to mark the position of the pressure plate. Apply a lick of paint to the flywheel and by extension to the clutch pressure plate. You can also use a striking tool, such as a center punch, a tap against the flywheel and a tap against the pressure plate. The latter method brings more certainty that the mark will still exist after a thorough polishing of the flywheel and pressure plate. This engine will be completely overhauled anyway, including a new clutch, so marking makes little sense in this case. The pressure plate is held in place by six bolts with spring washers. With a 13mm socket wrench, we unscrew the six bolts. Loosen the bolts, one quarter turn at a time, diagonally, as shown in this video. The purpose of this technique is to gradually loosen the pressure plate from the flywheel to avoid damage. In this way, you gradually reduce the pressure with which the pressure plate presses on the clutch plate. When the pressure is released, you can loosen the bolts in any order. With all the bolts loose, you can disassemble the pressure plate. Note that the clutch plate is now loose in the flywheel. Now remove the clutch plate. To install the clutch, you will need an alignment tool. This clutch pilot tool is used to center the clutch plate in the gland nut. You can also use this alignment tool while disassembling the clutch. It will ensure that the clutch plate stays neatly in place while disassembling the pressure plate. It will prevent the clutch plate from accidentally falling to the ground and becoming damaged or contaminated with grease or oil. In our AB1300 engine it doesn't make much difference. The clutch plate is so contaminated that it is no longer usable. You can see here that with the special pilot tool, the clutch plate stays neatly seated in the flywheel. You don't have to apply this, but it has come in handy over the years. We show the condition of all the parts here. If you want to reuse your engine's clutch, you will need to evaluate all the parts. The pressure plate must be able to exert a certain pressure, which is difficult to measure without special tools. Although the pressure plate still looks clean, it is possible that it has lost its pressure force. The pressure surface should be clean, with no corrosion or damage in the metal. The bolts and spring washers can usually be reused. Caution! These are bolts with a tensile strength of 8.8. .8. If you want to replace them, you should look for 8.8 .8 bolts of the same length, or use the ones that come with the pressure plate. A clutch plate contaminated by grease is always to be replaced, it cannot be repaired. The thickness of the plate must have a minimum thickness, 
Consult your VW workshop manual for your type of engine. If the flywheel is free of grease, then the crank seal is probably in good condition and you could install the new clutch without disassembling the flywheel. If everything is in grease, then the crank seal needs to be replaced. We are going for a total overhaul for this engine anyway, we will disassemble the flywheel in the next video. Before fitting a new clutch, you will need to clean the pressure surface of the flywheel. First degrease it, for example with brake cleaner. Then use steel wool to remove the remains of the old clutch plate. Check that the pressure surface of the flywheel is undamaged, free of corrosion. The flywheel is equipped with drains all around. These serve to give dust from the clutch plate, an engine oil, an outlet to the outside. Engine oil is harmful to the clutch plate. The drains are there to protect the clutch plate when the crank seal is damaged. Clean those drains, make sure the holes are completely clear. Clean everything one last time. The flywheel is now ready to receive the new clutch. To determine which type of clutch you need, you will need to measure the diameter of the hole in the flywheel. For this AB1300 engine, this is just over 180 millimeters. The clutch plate must be the same size, which is 180 millimeters. You can see that this 180 millimeter clutch plate fits neatly into the flywheel of our 1300 engine. Use clean gloves to handle the clutch parts. The parts should never come into contact with grease or oil. The pressure plate must be the same size as the clutch plate, which is 180 millimeters. Here you can see the marking on the head of the bolt, 8.8 .8 means that this bolt has a higher tensile strength than a standard M8 bolt. You can replace the original bolts and spring washers with the ones that came with the pressure plate. This is not always the case, you can also order them separately. The clutch release bearing you will have to look at separately and depends on the year of manufacture of the engine. On the left we show an older type of release bearing, of the floating type. On the younger generation engines, a guided release bearing, also called a fixed release bearing, was used. This type of clutch release bearing slides over a bearing sleeve in the gearbox. Apply a small amount of clutch mounting grease to the inside of the gland nut. This is because there are needle bearings in there, which ensure that the primary drive shaft of the gearbox rotates smoothly. Use very little, you don't want the grease to spread and affect the clutch. Make sure the pressure surface of the new pressure plate is grease-free. If you are reusing the old pressure plate, check for corrosion or damage to the pressure surface. Use the clutch alignment tool to center the new clutch plate in the gland nut. You may want to wear fresh silicone gloves to install the clutch plate, you absolutely must avoid getting this part dirty. Install the new pressure plate, start by tightening the top bolt by hand. If you are reusing the old pressure plate, Make sure that the marking on the pressure plate matches the marking on the flywheel. Next, install the five other bolts by hand. Tighten the bolts with a socket wrench until you feel resistance.
Now tighten the bolts, in diagonal order, a quarter turn each time, to tighten the pressure plate very gradually. You can see here that the pressure plate is slowly, but surely, coming to tension against the flywheel. When the pressure plate is pushing against the flywheel, and more resistance can be felt on the bolts, it is time to tighten the bolts with a torque wrench. The six bolts should be tightened to a torque of 25 Newton meters. Use an appropriate torque wrench adjusted to 25 Newton meters. Tighten the bolts in a diagonal fashion until 25 Newton meters is reached. The alignment tool may now be removed. Apply a small amount of clutch assembly grease to the pressure surface of the pressure plate, where the release bearing will push against it. In the next video, we will show different techniques and tools to loosen the gland nut. We will also show how to disassemble and reassemble the flywheel. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments under each video on our YouTube channel. See you soon.